everybody, and thank you for joining us back here at Loeb Sciences Channel. We're sitting here once again with Chief Executive Officer and Director Phil Young. And previously, Phil, you and I discussed your past. We discussed why you're the perfect man for the job. We discussed you becoming CEO and so on. But more importantly, we discussed the real issues that plague people that Loeb Sciences is looking to solve. And today, I wanted to go a little bit deeper in that. Are you up for it? Sure, let's go. Perfect. So first and foremost, for those potentially new here, can you give us the real elevator pitch of what it is Loeb Sciences is in your guys' mission? Sure. We're developing psychedelic-derived therapeutics in combination with uh, a well-known supplement, NAC and acetylcysteine. Uh, initially, we're targeting two unmet medical needs. One, treatments for traumatic brain injury, and two, treatments for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Amazingly, in this day and age, 2022, there are no FDA approved treatments for either of those indications, despite millions and millions of people suffering from them annually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, first and foremost, the first thing that comes probably to most people's minds would be vets. But on top of that, again, just a giant population of people suffering these with, with virtually unmet needs, right? So now kind of, if you can help me, walk me through your guys' approach. You mentioned using psychedelics. You mentioned using NAC. Explain to me what those are and like how you utilize them. Sure. Initially, we're starting out with a well-known mushroom product, the magic mushrooms, as it's called, named psilocybin. Um, the active moiety in psilocybin is, is a chemical called psilocin. Nature created a prodrug, uh, psilocybin, because standalone psilocin is very difficult to stabilize. So when you take psilocybin, it needs to go first pass through the liver to dephosphorylate and become psilocin, then it does its activity. Um, we know that that in and of itself, psilocin, uh, has anti-inflammatory activities, as well as there's been uh, literature in uh, preclinical work and animal models demonstrating it can improve uh, synaptic functions and neuronal signaling, and that can last for months at a time. Uh, so we have the anti-inflammatory activity, we have the brain improvement, if you will, from psilocybin, but add to that NAC and acetylcysteine, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory in and of itself. And it's also uh, a well-known glutathione uh, enhancer. So it increases the glutathione signaling in the brain, which is very important. In fact, in a study in Iraq in a forward operating field hospital, half the soldiers with blast wounds got NAC, half didn't get NAC, the half that got neck, all statistically significantly better outcomes. And so we decided to patent and try com combining the two drugs to treat these indications that are very brain centric. And we believe we can improve brain health by giving both combination, the combination of both products. Yeah, interesting. And so, so that's kind of the, the, the chemical side of things or the medication side of things right now. Sure. Turn towards the auxiliary things. You guys talk about using olfactory bulbs and so on. Explain to me how the, the concept of smell, and then we'll, we'll dive into the other part with the VR afterwards. Walk me through that first part, the concept of smell and how that, that is a part of this process. Well, it's, it's two stages. The olfactory bulb is a, um, an anatomical structure back in the sinuses, and it, it's the direct line or highway to the brain. So if we can deliver the appropriate drug that is the right size, it can go right from the olfactory bulb when it's nasally inhaled, right to the brain. And that's our plans is to create uh, a therapeutic regimen where we can deliver intranasal therapy, get the, get the concentrations we need directly into the brain without first pass metabolism. That's key. Mm -hmm. There's no sense delivering anything intranasally if it has to go through the first pass. So in order to support that, we have uh, worked with and, and uh, have a collaboration with a great manufacturing partner developing a stable form of psilocin that will be able to administer that way and use the transmit transmission from the olfactory bulb to the brain to right. deliver the therapeutics for both PTSD as well as uh, traumatic brain injury. Interesting. And now, last but not least, walk me through this idea of using VR or visual input and so on to help this process along. Sure. Uh, it's been well documented and it's becoming more and more common where uh, patients are being treated in the virtual reality universe, if you will. Uh, one of our advisors for our, for our collaboration were joint owners of the Chrysalis Systems. Uh, Dr. Skip Rizzo out of UCLA is the probably leading physician in the world in combining virtual reality along with uh, psychedelics and or counseling sessions for patients with PTSD, principally focusing on first responders and uh, military personnel. 
his, his database shows that patients can get very, very high levels of achievement and can really learn to deal with the PTSD when they get exposed to whatever the event was that predicated it. It could be a first responder responding to something especially troublesome or, 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 uh, or scary, or it could be a soldier you know, with a blast wound and we can recreate all of that. So we created the Chrysalis system with Dr. Rizzo, Brett Leonard, a Hollywood uh, director, very famous, mm -hmm. and futurists from LA to create a pod, a system where patients won't be tethered to uh, eye goggles or glasses. They can sit comfortably, be wrapped around with a screen. The screen will biometrically monitor the patients and will create virtual content, not only for use with psychedelics, but for use in virtual counseling. FDA has recently approved several companies for doing that, and we think we're just at the beginning of it especially combined with the metaverse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Phil. That's something I would like right now. That sounds so fun and interesting, but that sounds like such a good time. But here, let's turn now towards the roadmap of where you guys currently are and like the upcoming milestones people should be watching out for. And also, if you can, like explain to people and try to help them understand the timelines of how this stuff comes online. Sure. Well, we're, we're a full-blown drug development company. So everything we're doing now is geared towards taking our product selections through the clinical development pipeline and pathway. So we're looking towards the second half of this year, uh, initiating our first phase one studies. It's gonna be a group of studies, uh, safety studies, of course, phase one always have to demonstrate safety. Uh, but also we're gonna be looking at um, combining the psilocybin and NAC in healthy volunteers, but then moving that into PTSD patients. So we'll be able to one, demonstrate safety, that's key for FDA and all the global regulators, but two, we'll be able to hopefully get some hints at, at some efficacy, which is gonna be very important as we set the stage and develop clinical trial protocols for 2023, where we wanna initiate our phase two study. Once again, focused on uh, the PTSD patients initially, and then the traumatic brain injury patients as we move into, into the phase two studies in 2023. Interesting, yeah, and so aside from that, like. So I see a lot of companies utilizing psychedelics for all, for all sorts of different purposes, mental illness, addiction, obesity, but I've never seen one like tackle it quite like yours. Is it fair to say that you guys are in kind of a unique position right now? Yeah, we're, we're very different. We, we believe from the very beginning that the best way to create a global sustainable pharmaceutical market is to treat patients where they are at home or in the emergency department uh, where they work. And we believe we can do this by not inducing a hallucinatory event or a trip as it's called. We think that repetitive treatments after over a series of days will give the same benefit as a hallucinatory trip, but give the patients the opportunity to stay at home and to do what they would normally do instead of being confined to a clinic and having a psychedelic trip, which for some patients is absolutely important. It can help with be a very good trigger towards healing specifically for the very severely treatment resistant to press patients. But we believe low dose over a short period of time combined with NAC will give the same benefits, but allow us to create a market that is scalable and the clinic based markets not scalable. Yeah. So let's, let's take a look at that again, it's kind of like a, a bonus question. So let's say your, your end goal is achieved. What would that look like? Can you walk us through an example of what it would be if, if your vision was, had completely come to life? The, uh, what it would look like is, uh, 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 somebody playing uh, soccer on the weekend uh, collides with another player as they're going to head a ball. They have a, uh, they lose consciousness, they come back, they go to the emergency room, diagnosed with a concussion, which is a traumatic brain injury. They're given right then and there the first dose of our therapeutic regimen of the psilocybin and NAC. They get a prescription to go home and take the NAC over the next five days and the psilocybin or psilocin, depending upon what we're doing. And these patients will then recover from their event much faster and have fewer side effects and the long-term consequences of a concussion. That's one idea. The same thing holds true for PTSD. Mm -hmm. People develop it in different ways and they have different triggers. But the same thing holds true is that a patient who's developed PTSD would greatly benefit and that's what we're looking for. We're looking to take care of patients who have no treatment options now. Wow. Okay. All right, Phil. Well, I feel like you did a great job of explaining your guys' mission here, walking us through the tools you're going to use to bring this into the world and giving us the timelines and anything. Is there anything you feel like we missed in this? Any last words or anything you want to add before we go today? 
No, I'm, I'm excited to do this series with you and I, I enjoy communicating with, with you and with hopefully our investor base and creating new people to follow the company and watch our success and join in with us. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining me again today, Phil. And thank you everybody for watching. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, I know that I know it's quite a deep topic, but we'll do our best to explain it. So leave a comment below and we'll dive into it. But for now, stay tuned and expect more content coming soon. Phil, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Michael.